Our Heavenly Father, we bow our heads and give Thee thanks for all the goodness, mercies that Thou hast bestowed upon us, knowing that we are unworthy of anything that You would do for us. To think that one time we were alienated from You without hope, without mercy, without God, without Christ, in this world, living for the enemy of our soul, and one day Jesus found us and saved us and cleansed us from a life of sin and give us the Holy Spirit and set us in the service for God. Oh, Father, some glorious day he shall come the second time, and we which are alive and remain shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the trumpet of God shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and forever be with the Lord. What a day our hopes is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. We are looking forward to the coming of the great King. Now we've gathered here in Chicago tonight, Father, in this auditorium to glorify Him, to lift up our voices and praise Him, to sing songs, teach His Word, and to pray for our sick people who are in the journey. Won't you meet with us, Father, and bless us in these things? We ask humbly for these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. And be seated. <clears throat> Good evening to all our uh, family. We are happy to be here tonight to meet you and greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I didn't think there'd be anybody back tonight after such a uh, marvel as I made last evening. I'm, when you don't follow the Holy Spirit, you always get in trouble, don't you? <laughs> I was standing back behind the curtain listening to that marvelous song, and something said to me, Now's the time to speak if you on the subject of Watchman What of the Night. And then I got out here and thought about something else, and, well, I'm, I kept it too long. So I'm sorry of it. But tonight, maybe the Lord, by His divine grace and, and foreknowledge, will clear the thing up and give us a great pouring out of His blessings tonight. We're happy for the Lord Jesus, and today I met... Many um, good friends and met some minister brothers that I've never met before in my life. And now, tonight, we won't keep you long because we've got several nights yet until next Sunday night, God willing, in the service. And I'm grateful to you people who come out to uh, hear the services and to hear this wonderful singing that we're having and worship our Lord Jesus and the fellowship around His Word and, and around His blessings that He bestows upon us. And it's seemingly that I was talking to some brother today, and he said, or this morning, he said, Brother Branham, do you feel like you ought to start some big services here in America? I said, no. The first thing, if you start big services, you're going to have to have big things to cope with that service. You're going to have to have radio and television programs and so forth, the way the modern American. I'd rather keep my meetings small so I won't have to have much money to take care of it. And just meet with little groups here and there. Now, in the the event that for years now, for the past eight or nine years, I've been going around through uh, America and different parts of the world uh, preaching, and the Lord gave a gift that was made manifest, or it was given when the very hour I was born, and you know the story of it, and. That is just as true. It's been tested in every fiery furnace the devil could throw it in around the world, everywhere. And um, seemingly in America, 
It's become a common thing. People go say, oh, well, I've seen that done before. Oh, I know about it. But the big kickback comes is, well, Brother Brown, don't pray for enough people. That's where it always it comes back. No need to go into his meeting because, oh, you'll get 20 or 30 or night, something like that. The rest of them go home without being prayed for. Well, some fellow wrote me a letter here not long ago, a good critical letter, which was good. I appreciate it because it told me where I was standing. He said, Brother Branham, I've been following your meetings for a long time. He said, I think your meetings are wonderful. Never seen anything like it in my life. He said, but you know, you're so lazy. He said, <laughs> that God had to raise up old Roberts and others to pray for his sick children. <laughs> said, you'll pray for about 30 and they'll pack you away from the pulpit and said, then you're finished until the next day and nobody can see you. said, people believe what you're talking about. Get down there and pray for them. He said, well, I thought, well, that's pretty good. You know, I guess that's all right. Maybe that's a lot of truth to that. So a few days ago, since we come back from Germany and now over in the old country and Germany and around the other parts of the world, oh my. Well, first meeting night, you can expect anywhere from 30 to 50, 100 and 200,000 people at one gathering. Thousands are healed at one time. Just as soon as they see something happen, that settles it. They're ready. And, but in America, we've got too much teaching. We've got too much different teaching. <laughs> one says, you know, like the other day, there was a great conference went on here. I don't know whether many of you know about it or not, among some church people who would visit all the meetings. And they, uh, the healing services and so forth. So they was, met ahead of conference and was going to draw up a conclusion of what they come to. And, um, one of them said, what do you think about Mr. Allen? The biggest radic I ever seen, said the group. So what do you think about Oral Roberts? Said mass psychology. So what about William Branham? Said a polished soothsayer. <laughs> that was, how can you expect to do much around there? See, Jesus himself couldn't work. In an audience like that. That's right. When he, you've got to believe it. That's all. And when he went to his own country, there was many mighty works that he could not do because of their unbelief. Later on in the week, I want to explain that to you. And at Chicago, I want to do something I haven't done for years, if God willing. The other day, I usually go by when I have a vision. But this time, it wasn't a vision. It was just something impressed me. I was sitting in the woods... I've been out there for eight or ten days. Just go, come in at night time about nine o'clock. Go back next morning about four. Just to keep away from the public and the rest and pray. And sitting there, it seemed like something come to me. And I said, Lord, why is it I can't go overseas? I've got to have some kind of a sponsorship. I can't go over and take up money from them people. So they're poor and the American public has to sponsor it and have to come back and have a year or two's meetings and go over and spend what I got and then come back and take some more meetings. I said, I don't know, seemingly, then if you leave America and your services go down, then it's, it's finished for a while, it looks like, and it's so hard to build back again. And um, something said to me, but you haven't done what I told you to do. And I said, well, what is it? And I just answered myself back. Now, just let myself relax and let the Spirit do the talking. Now, it wasn't a vision. I don't even say it was a revelation. I don't know. It just something looked like telling me. And said, well, what's happened? See? I said, well, didn't you tell me to go do this? And I've watched it and checked it. And Mr. Baxter told me one time, now when the, the angel of the Lord first met me, he said, now, you were born to pray for sick people. And you take this gift... Uh, to the peoples of the world. You've read this testimony over and over. And if you check it, now them days, to be honest, I didn't know that the scripture said gift instead of gifts. But if you follow, all I done was roll down what he said. And many times he tells me things, I just write down what he says because I don't know what it means. I just write it down. And I find out it comes to pass. And now I question of my ability. He said, I'm not no education, no personality. And what could I do? People won't believe me. And he told me these gifts would be a confirmation, like Moses done signs before the people. And I started off, and I'd start my prayer lines and come down a prayer line praying for the sick people going along. And great things was happening. Many of you remember my early ministry. And after a while, I'd hit a woman or a man or something that wasn't right. I'd stop them right there. And when I would do it, I'd tell the people what was the matter and what we should do and so forth. Pass them on and pray for others. 
Then the people began to see that done. Oh, they rallied for that. And then we just finally cut the whole thing out all to perfect discernment all the time. And that's what he didn't want me to do. That's right. I'm just supposed to pray for the sick people. That's right. Just pray for the people. And after all, you know, if a people, if especially here at home, if they have been taught to lay hands on the sick and pray for them, that's what they believe. And you say, does that have anything to do with it? It certainly does. Why did Jesus stand here one time, look out upon the harvest? How many believe he was the Lord of the harvest? Sure, we all do. And he looked out upon the harvest and he said, pray ye, the Lord of the harvest, to send labors unto his harvest. Now, in other words, you ask me to do just what I know that's got to be done, but yet you got to ask me for it. Said you have not because you ask not. Is that right? You ask not because you believe not. A prophet one time had a stick in his hand or an arrow, and he told King, strike the ground, you know, and he only struck it two or three times. He said, why don't you strike it more? See? And there's certain things that we have to do. That's right. And I believe that if I really could get to more people and pray for them, lay hands on them, uh, and especially in America, I've crossed back and forth across this nation time after time after time, and tens of thousands of things been done. Now, miracles, signs, and so forth has been uh, committed. But it's seemingly, I believe if I would just go to a group like this where everybody knows all about it, and just pray for the people, and then just check back in a day or two and watch what happens. Amen. There's got to be something. And he said, L- listen, check his words. I was born to pray for sick people. See? That was it. Pray for them. The prayer changes things. Sometimes if they can't get comprehended in their mind, prayer changes things. See? And most everyone in America throughout the whole nation knows all about it and everything. So some of these nights in Chicago, don't know just when, but I want to start and just pray for a whole group of people. Bring them up just, if I can come to the platform and never touch the anointing of that type for discernment. I, after I explain to you how that comes, I've never done it publicly. I will, maybe tomorrow night or sometime. Then I want to start and just pray for the sick people and check each one and let them report in 24 hours what's happened. And I believe you'll see a great result. The Lord get grant his blessings. Now, the other day in Germany, how many here has ever seen the picture of the angel of the Lord that was taken in Houston? Let's see your hands. It's here in the building. They got it here. And it was taken in different places. And the other day in Germany, it was taken. And now the state church in Switzerland was against me. They were against Billy Graham. As you'd seen the write-up that brother got in the paper. Hmm. And it, uh, so then after he left, and the reason they was against him, because he believed in the supreme deity of Jesus Christ. Now the Swiss church doesn't believe that Jesus was, was the virgin-born son of God. They come from the Swingley. First was Luther, and then comes Swingley and Calvin and so forth. And Swingley was in Switzerland, and they, the state church is... Is built up on his doctrine. They believe that he was a, the, in their own books and everything. They declare it, that they believe that he was the son of Joseph, called the son of God. He was the prophet that Moses spoke of would come, but actually Joseph was his father. That knocks every prop from under That's Christianity. Right. It's, no. That takes every divine thing away from it. He was absolutely the virgin born son of God and Joseph had no more to do with it and we had to do with it. That's right. He was a virgin born son of God. And I believe that with all my heart, soul, mind and strength. And then I jumped out in behind Billy Graham and I started the same thing. Ooh, my. They bitterly opposed it. And then when they wrote against me and then give that right up against Billy, then the Catholics come around and said, see, they're both no good. So that, oh, people could only get their head right or their heart right one. So then when they did, it went up in Germany. And when we was to come up to Karlsruhe, Germany, they wrote up there to the state church and told them not to receive me because I was an imposter. So the church and states together there, what the church says the state has to do. So they we had the big cathedral that would seat thousands of people, had to build it because they wouldn't rent no place to them. Then the authorities told them they couldn't have it. But Dr. Guggenbuehl, a very smart lawyer that's uh, one of our sponsors there, 
He didn't take no for an answer. He went right on down to the major in the United States Army. He said, tell Brother Branham to come on. If the rest of them can come, he can too. So it gave me a chance to come into Germany. The first night, they had to mill around me to keep the communists from taking a shot at me somewhere. They come over and get Billy, my boy. But the Lord was with us, and they just kept walking around. So in the dark, they couldn't take a shot, you know, because they was firm. And on the second night, God gave sight to a total blind girl, eight years old. Then the state church and their pastors and all got together and wanted to have a meeting with me. They wanted to ask me some questions. We went to a breakfast, and at the breakfast, they taken a big German camera and set it up like this. Up in the day, there's plenty of light. They needed no flash or nothing. They were taking the pictures of the breakfast. And so when they did, they was um, they taken several pictures, and they said, Now, Brother Branham, we believe that God is with you, but then visions, we can't understand it. Can't understand it. Oh, I said, I couldn't explain it. Look, look. It's God, and you can't explain God. You've got to believe God. God's not known by, by scientific. God's known by, by faith. Well, they couldn't see that at all, you know. And just at the time, the sovereignty of God, right when the stream was on, I said, just a moment. Here he is now. And I said, he's coming now. Well, that German camera, they just moved it right on me. And the German thought he'd try a few shots. So he, he took uh, the picture. And when it did, the Holy Spirit come down. I said, the man standing right here to my left, he's a stranger among us all this morning. I said, he's not a German, neither is he a French. I was at Luzon at the time. I said, he's not a French, German, or I said, he's an Italian. And he's been the leader of 32,000 communists. And the boy started crying out. And I said, now he picked up a Bible. His background was Catholic. And he picked up a Bible one day and was reading where Jesus died for his sins. And he accepted Christ. Now he's persecuted. He's run a little orphanage up in the mountains. He can't eat his breakfast this morning. That's why he pushed his table, uh, the plate back from his table, from the table, because he has an ulcer in his stomach. And the boy raised his hand and said, every word of that's the truth. And he said, I looked at him. He was still, he was gray-headed and eating a good square meal. I said, but thus saith the Lord, eat your meal because Jesus Christ has made you well. He sat right down and started eating. Well, that German camera was standing there taking those pictures. And after it left, then they took about a dozen more. They'd taken about a dozen before and a dozen after. And when they developed them, there was the angel of the Lord right on the picture coming down. <laughs> so showed him coming down. When he closed around where I was standing, the next thing showed where he was going away. And you see half of it that way as it's moving away. And I had my hand up and saying, it's thus saith the Lord. It's finished like that. And I have him here tonight. So that I can show them to you. I don't know how well you'd be able to see them from the platform here. Sometime we might develop them. If we get somebody that want them. And we can maybe make negatives from them. And put them into print. But it just goes to show that every time. I've never had a time that the gift of God was ever questioned. But what God come right down and done something outstanding. So criticism is perfectly welcome. Amen. We, we love to see it. Oh, we're always waiting to see the glory of our Lord God. Now. I've got them here. You may not be able to see. I don't know how good the... Can you see that from where, you, from where I'm standing? Um, it's, a, it's a picture of the breakfast. Now, here's all the ministers. The camera's sitting back here. See where the lights is in the building? Up here. And it's 11 o'clock in the day. Doesn't need any, any light of any type. Now, that's the first picture. And then here's where they all stood to their feet. And there's the angel of the Lord coming down. And... Here's a man standing, and that's me and my hand pointed towards him, and this is him standing here with a Roman collar on. That's, um, that's explaining to him what it's all about. That's when it's coming, just starting down. See, it's just above. This is me standing right here. And it's just above me. Now, here's the next picture. When it doesn't settle down over the head like that, it's, it's, it's down over that, and the vision is going on. And here's the next picture. When it's leaving away, and just half of them it can be seen there where the... The angel of the Lord has still got it masked over, just half of it going away. And here's the next picture after it is perfectly clear and normal. There's nothing there, see, after it had gone away. Jesus Christ still lives and reigns. Um, all right. Now, that doesn't mean anything to me. These people in the pit here, I never noticed. They didn't get to see it. So I kind of show it, if you don't mind, just a moment. There's the one before, see. See, that's a picture that was before anything was taken. And here is the... Angel of the Lord coming down. See? And here is a picture after it's already settled on me where I was standing. See? 
And here's the picture just is dwindling away there, you see. And just half of my face is showing where it's going off like that. And if you'll happen to notice, it's going off on the right-hand side. And I always call my stick everywhere to the right-hand side. The angel Lord always appears to me on the right-hand side. Every time. And there's a, and to prove that it's true, there goes the angel Lord off on the right-hand side. Just that, and here's the picture afterwards that there was nothing left in the building. And we got, we got around 20-something pictures um, between these two things and camera stationary sitting at the same place and nothing at all showed any other wise. So it just goes to show that our dear Lord Jesus still lives and reigns, doesn't he? And he's wonderful, exceedingly, abundantly, and we love him with all of our heart. Now, um, the Lord be with you. Now, we're not going to try to keep you, but just a few minutes tonight and preach just a little bit, call the prayer line, and then maybe a little later on, you get all your friends in that wants to be prayed for. And when the masses get to coming like that, I want to start a prayer line and just come by and, and take that day to visit and shaking hands with Brother Bose and everything and come at the platform that night and just start praying for the sick. That's right. Just come right in and start praying, laying hands on the sick. And I believe if it were God would answer my prayer like that, it would revolutionize my ministry before God. And, and I believe with that inspiration out in the woods the other day, I solemnly believe with all my heart that God wants me to do it. That, that's the truth. I want to read a little tonight, just a verse or two, out of God's eternal word before we start to, to pray for the sick. And we'll try to be out in a, just a little bit so you can come back tomorrow night. Now, in the book of Romans... We read uh, beginning with the um, 19th verse of the fourth chapter of Romans. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to do. And now I want to uh, take the text for a few minutes of speaking on this faith in action. Now, faith is not based upon the shifting sands of man's ideas. You just couldn't. If I come here and told you there was an angel of the Lord that was in the building and, and these things happening, if I didn't have something to prove that to you, you'd have a right to doubt it. If I said God gave a gift to do a certain thing, and you see it come right back around and fail, fail, fail. You say, that's wrong. But when it comes back and God proves it every time to be perfect, then that's right. God has proved it. So that's the way we have to, faith has to have a resting place. Faith, if you were going to, to get married, some of you young men, if you were going to get married, the woman that you marry, you'd have to have faith in her. She'd have to have faith in you. Because it can't be based upon anything else. It's, you've got to have faith in what we're doing. And the only solid resting place for faith is on God's Word. God's Word is a solid rock of any faith that anybody wants to have in the supernatural. It must be placed first in the Word of the living God. How it's been through the age, how that when man of old and all ages, when they would really find the Word of God and could grasp it, faith went into action right away. Look at Noah. Uh, way back in Genesis, when God spoke to Noah that day, the word of God came to Noah and told him to build an ark for the saving of his household. And you know, the world stood upright before the Andalusian destruction. It, it wasn't leaning back like this to bring water. And when God told Noah he was going to send a flood or rain, why, well, you know, he had critics. But faith doesn't look at what circumstances is. Faith looks to what God said. Faith don't try to reason. Faith just takes it at its face value. Now, there's two different kinds of what we call faith today. And I'm sorry to say this to my audience tonight, but I'm too sure of this, or real sure of this, that there's too much intellectual faith instead of being heart faith. See, so many revivals are going across the country and people are claiming to be saved and great evangelists, saying they had so many thousands saved and so forth. I believe it's... Be and then you go back and find out those people don't stay. They're just, uh, just in an emotion in the meeting and they're worked away. Many people in the meeting raise up and claim healing and walk away more by emotion or more by, more by psychic than they do by real divine revelation uh, of the Lord Jesus. 
And the first little pain strikes them, they give up and say, well, I didn't get my healing. Now, if you really believe that with your heart, 10,000 pains will never make you give it up. Right. That's right. Because you, your faith has already went to motion. You, you're, you're in action right then. Now, when, when God spoke to Noah and told him the impossibles. Now, there was no rain, never had rain, and never was a cloud in the sky or anything else. But Noah knew that it was going to rain because God said so. Yes, sir. Now, he was considered a fanatic. He was considered a little crazy, I suppose, in his days. A real fanatic. And most always, when you find people that will dare to take God at his word, they're considered neurotics or fanatics. That's right. That's right. The real true believer has never had the world to pat him on the back. It's always against him because he takes God at his word. And God has never uh, been a friend to the world in the way of the world of being a friend to God. I mean, they're against God because they can't understand God. And you'll never know God only by faith. But Noah, he moved with fear, knowing that there was coming a destruction and he built an ark because he had his faith rested up on God's eternal word. Amen. No matter how much the people said it can't be done, no matter how much science combed the globe and said there will never be clouds up there, there's no rain to come down, if God's word said there's going to rain, it's up to God to make a way for the rain. Amen. If God said so, that settles it. That's what we ought to do. That's what this little group in here ought to do tonight. Take God just for what He says. Don't make a difference how it looks. Don't reason it. If you've only got intellectual faith, you'll reason God's Word. You'll try to reason it. Say, now let me see. Now the doctor said I can't get well. And if the doctor said so, that ought to settle it. That's reason. Faith don't reason. Faith believes it anyhow. Look how many, has been here, how many I guess, right in here now that the doctors has given up. Look at the great clinics, John Hopkins, Mayo Brothers. And through my own humble ministry, I've seen Almighty God turn those people to naught and heal the sick that they said it was impossible for them to get well. And the magazines and so forth pack the articles of it. See, it's the people's faith. Then, man, I have nothing against the clinics now, I understand. The doctors, they're all right. But they're a man. Their knowledge is limited. But God's unlimited. And when God says anything, it's just that way. It just has to be. And you watch science will try to prove God to be a liar. Here some time ago they said God sure made a mistake when he said that he made the firmament before there was a sun to make the light. That he made a mistake. But you know what? They got climbing around in God's laboratory and found out that God was right? Yeah. They got an x-ray. Now they'll take your picture without any light. So the Bible said your, your body is full of light. And we come to find out the old scientist said that was crazy. There was no light in your body. But the Bible said your whole body's full of light, and we find out today that your body is just made up of light meters. The x-ray proves it. It takes your own lights in your body to take the picture on the inside of you. So God's right after all. Here some time ago they said that uh, uh, the Bible was wrong when it said man thinketh with his heart, so there's no mental faculties in the heart to think with. But they come to find out that God was right. Way down in the human heart, there's a little compartment a little cell, a little place smaller than a cell that even blood don't even dwell in. It's not in the animal heart. It's only in the human heart. And they say it's the occupation of the soul. So after all, God lives in the heart and man thinketh from his heart, not from his mind. He reasons here, but he believes from here. So if you just only got a mental conception of the Bible, if you say, well, I, I believe it because I read it, God's got to reveal it to you by your heart. No man can call Jesus the Christ only by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit deals in the heart. So if a man really believes it from his heart, he's not afraid to put it to a test. But if you're just mentally, you'll reason out and say, well, I couldn't do that. They might do it. This one might do it. She might have got well, but I don't know about myself. But if you really base your faith on God's eternal word and it's down in your heart, all devils out of torment can't upset you. No, sir. You've got to stay there. I know what I speak of because I've seen it and I've put it to the test myself and I know that it's true. Why would I stand here on the platform at night and challenge an audience of many thousands, stood in Bombay, India, 500,000 people and challenged them, 17 different religions to come to the platform and show me one visible sign of a supernatural being and stood right in the midst of atheists and unbelievers and witch doctors and everything else standing out there by the dozens trying to throw a spell on me. And challenge the blind man. Hallelujah. God gave me sight right there. Turn the whole thing around. 
Why? God said he'd do it. That's all. Only thing you do, God said so. That's good enough for me. If he told me he'd be with me and help me in these things, he'll do it. Amen. He has done it. Eight years, nine years has passed in the ministry. And he's still doing it. And he will continue to do it because he's God and he cannot lie. God's word is right. Every time. If you'll only look and see what the word says. What if Pharaoh would have looked into the word of God? He would have changed his attitude towards Moses and the rest of, of the Israelites. If he'd have looked in and see where God promised by his word he was going to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. He would have done it. He would have changed his attitude towards the people. But he, had, he was all so busy. He went to church. Sure, a very religious man. And um, he went to church and he was a, what you call a mental believer, a psychic believer, or whatever you want to call it. He had a, a knowledge of what he was doing in the, the mental way. But to have a real revelation that God was going to keep that word, if he had had that, he wouldn't have acted toward Moses the way he did. But Moses, with his foot on the throne, a son of Pharaoh, was become the ruler. And he would be the chief captain over the biggest uh, military nation in the world. And had the world at their feet. Egypt was, a, was the commercial nation of all the world at that time. And Moses, with his foot on the throne, a young man, 40 years old, and he could have went right on into, but he chose rather because why he looked at the word of God and he seen God made the promise. That's right, man. Yep. And Moses' faith did not rest upon what he could do with the biggest army in the world. It didn't rest on what he could do sitting on Pharaoh's throne as a Pharaoh. His faith rested upon what thus saith the Lord said. Amen. What did he have to do? If he'd have chose to sit on Pharaoh's throne, there'd have been little maidens come by and giving him wine and everything, and they'd have brought him food and everything. But he looked out into that desert would take a two million Jews, was much not much more than heathens, to take him out there in the desert where there wasn't even a, a growing thing. He had to feed him in the journey for forty years. He had deserts and disappointments and everything ahead of him. But God's word give the promise. He'd take him to the promised land. And Moses took out after God's word. Why? If Moses would have took the uh, Pharaoh's throne, he'd been known as another Pharaoh. He'd been gone and in torment today. But he's immortal among man today because he chose rather and put his faith into action. How are you going to do it, Moses? What can you do? How can you... Uh, a one man lead a two million people to a promised land. God said so. And he was vindicated by an angel who come down and talked to him and told him that he was born for this purpose. And Moses knew what he was talking about. So he didn't stand back and baby around with it. He put his faith into action. That's what it takes. No matter how much faith you've got, if you won't use it, it's no good to you. That's right. right. What good is a God of Moses if he ain't the same God today? That's right. What good is a historical God? You people who go to church and your church only teaches that some historical fact about the Holy Ghost coming back on the day of Pentecost. There is no such a thing today. There was healing back there. There's, what good does that do you? There's no more than reading George Washington once lived. That's right. Abraham Lincoln once lived according to the history. Abraham Lincoln lived according to the history. George Washington lived. But they're dead and buried according to the history. But look, Jesus Christ lived. He died. He rose again according to the scriptures of life forevermore. That's what Washington done. You believe Washington and doubt Christ. Hallelujah. What we need today is some real genuine faith put into action. Yes, sir. We need real faith and men who dare to put God's uh, uh, words to their heart and apply it to themselves. You try to apply it to a generation gone by, but the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's forever God. He never fails. He's the same in principle. He's the same in power. He's the same tonight that he was when he walked on the banks of Galilee and appears nightly on this platform and proves himself alive from the dead. Amen. You don't have to take any history about it. It's a right now, present time fact that we see it. Amen. A few days ago when a woman rose from a wheelchair, two blind women received her sight. The power of God come down revealing things and secrets of the hearts, called them through the meetings and things like that, which is infallible proof that Jesus raised from the dead. Oh my! That takes a wishbone out and puts a backbone in your back when you come to find out that Jesus really, we got a fact that he raised from the dead and shared tonight. Proving himself alive. Action, your faith put in action. What good's it go do you to read of a historical God if he isn't the same God today? 
What good's it going to do to read about George Washington if he's dead and gone? It's just a history fact. But Jesus raised from the dead and he's the same today. What good does it do to, to paint fire to a freezing man? Show him a picture of a nice big warm fire and a man's a freezing. That's something it was. That's what people are trying to keep you alive by today. No wonder we got a failure in America of, of religion. No wonder the magazine says the spiritual on go was a burst. It's because that they failed to represent the right thing to them. They're trying to teach them of a historical God. But what we need today is a God resurrected from the dead and on hand right now to do whatever he promised he would do to confirm his word. And we need delegates out there in the audience who's willing to rest their soul on any word that God said and put it to action. Amen. Amen. That's what we need today. That's what we need as men and women who stand up to the forefront there and call the devil a lie. And say, Jesus Christ stripped you and robbed you of every right you had. And I'm in Christ Jesus and the world belongs to me. Amen. 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 Right. What good does it do to have a bird to have wings as long as you got him in a cage? He can't fly. He don't need no wings. If you got him in a cage, oh, you, that's the way a lot of these people are. They're in a cage. Taught the days of miracles has passed. Oh, there's a God. Oh, yes, we believe that Jesus was his son. I've accepted him as personal savior. But I tell you, all those things was back there in the old days. They're past. The days of miracles is past. What good your wings go to do you? What good your faith go to do you if you can't turn it loose? What good your faith go to do if you can't put it in action? Certainly, if I believe Jesus lives today, I'll put it in action. Amen. He lives today. He's the same Jesus. Certainly he is. If they blind Bartimaeus could trust him, I can too. If the woman with the blood issue could touch his garment, I can too. For he's open and willing and begging and accepting. Whosoever will, let him come and drink from the waters of life freely. What we need today is a revival of that type. Oh, you might take your bird and feed him very good orthodox food. Oh, yes. You might give him fish, bone, bird seed and everything else. But what good's it going to do him? What does fish bone do? What does bird seed do? Develop wings. What good's his wings if he got him in a cage? That's the way it is that you might send your seminary boys in there and teach them all kind of theology and all about this, that, or the other. But if you're afraid to turn your faith loose to trust God, what good does it do to teach them? Amen. 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 What we need is a turning loose. Let your faith go in action. I like David. He knew that the Samuel the prophet had poured the oil on his head. Come up there to the army that day, and there stood all big old Goliath over there making his boast. And the armies of God all backed up with their theology that they were Israelites and circumcised and so forth. But a scared. Oh, that reminds me of the church today. Scared to make a move. They come out and made a boast, but the wrong man heard it for him. A little old scrawny, runny looking boy about like that with a little piece of sheepskin wrapped around him said, You mean to tell me you cowards will stand here and let that uncircumcised Philistine defy the armies of the living God? He was ready to put what he had to action. Hallelujah! That's what we need tonight is to get somebody who'll take what you got and put it to action. Hallelujah. Let your faith go. Why he said, told Saul, said your servant was herding his father's sheep. And a lion come up to get a, a lamb. And I tucked a slingshot and knocked him down. He rose up against me. I tucked my knife and killed him. He said, a bear run after another one. And I tucked it out of his mouth. He said, God help me to do that. And how much more are willing that uncircumcised Philistine who's defying the armies of the living God? Hey, Amen. I like that. Yes, sir. Now, I saw one to send him to a seminary, you know. Get him fixed up. He went and tucked his great big armor and put on him and made him bow-legged. That's what's the matter today. We got so many theologists and, and different d- degrees and doctors and everything until it's why well, you know Saul found out that his ecclesiastical vest didn't fit a man of God. He said, Throw this thing off of me. I ain't got no use for it. That don't fit me. And I don't see where any great big names and so forth fits a real man of God. The Holy Ghost saved me. The Holy Ghost gave me this. The Holy Ghost is good enough for me to trust. I know if I can put him action to his word, God will bring it to pass. Certainly, if you only knew what you know and put your faith to work, God will do the same thing for you. The God of Moses is not dead. The God of David's not dead. This God's still alive. Jesus come, he knew who he was. When he went down there to the grave of Lazarus, that the father had showed him a vision. Told him to leave the house of Lazarus and is gone for four days. They sent for him. He didn't go back. 
He knew what was going to happen after the time fulfilled the vision. He said, our friend Lazarus sleepeth. I'll go wake him. When he gets to the grave, he said, I thank you, Father, that you've already heard me. Sure, he was crying when he went to the grave. He was sympathy with the people. But when he got to the grave there, there wasn't a doubt in his mind. He said, Father, I thank you because you've already heard me. But for these to stand by, I said, said, Lazarus, come forth. And a man had been dead four days, come out of the grave. Why? He knew where he was standing. He knew he was the anointed Christ. He knew he had God's word. He knew that what God showed him was the truth. And that same word, and he promised it to you. Whatsoever you ask in my name, that I'll do. That's right. He defeated the devil on the word of God. The devil come to him and said, now you do a miracle before me. I hear you're going to be a miracle worker. You do something before me. That devil still lives. Turn these stones into bread and eat and I'll believe you. Jesus said, it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. There's where his faith was anchored. There's where every man and woman's faith should be anchored tonight is upon the living word of God. If you believe that, you can put it in action. Jesus, when he was here on earth, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I can do nothing in myself. I'm the son. I can do nothing. But what the Father shows me, that I do. I come to do the will of God. And when he went away, he said, This ministry shall not cease now. For the very things that I do, you will do also. For I'll be with you even in you to the end of the world. And this will be a sign. Hallelujah. For the very things that I do shall you do to the end of the world. He that, that there will be people that will not see me no more, but you shall see me, for I'll be with you even in you to the end of the time. Jesus Christ is raised from the dead tonight. His supernatural powers is shared with us. His great signs and wonders are taking place. Things that's never took place since the apostles' days are taking place tonight. I say it humbly, but here's a direct evidence for scientific that Jesus Christ raised from the dead. The same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel through the wilderness. The same angel of God that come into the, the place and delivered Peter from the bars. The same Lord Jesus that stood before Paul in such a shining light that blinded his eyes. And the man around him couldn't see no light at all. But Paul had put his eyes out. And he was blind and had to be led by the hand to the city. The light was so bright around him. That same light. The Lord Jesus Christ is here tonight in his resurrected being and proving himself by infallible signs and wonders that he's your own people. Put your faith into action. Don't be a scared. My shame on you, don't be a scared. Stand fast in the liberty wherein Christ has made you free. Don't entangle yourself in a birdcage any longer. Come on, out of it. break down the walls. Christ tore down the middle walls of petition, he made us free. We're ready to fly away. Hey, man, I like that. I've often said one time watching an eagle. And after I leave this meeting, it comes my vacation, going to the mountains. How I love to get away to myself, way up into the mountains, and watch nature. God is in nature. One day while watching a big eagle there, when I wondered what he was doing, he was looking at me, and the little squirrel was barking at him. I thought, God, what do you bring that before me for? And after a while, that big fella, I said, I grabbed my rifle. I said, I could shoot you. And he wasn't worried about that. I kept noticing, fooling with his feathers and his wings like that. I thought, that's it. He trusts in his wings. God give him two wings and he's a free bird. He can escape the danger anytime he wants to. Hallelujah. That's it. If, if the eagle can have confidence in the wings that God give him, how much more ought you to have confidence in the Holy Ghost that saved your soul and baptized you in his soul? Then he didn't push and jump and squabble. He just made one big leap and jumped out, set his wings and flopped a couple of times and got above the timber line and just set his wings. What did he do? He put his faith in his wings into action. Here come a big puff of wind. He never flopped in the wind. He just rolled the wind and went higher. Another wind come, he rose higher. He rose higher, higher, until I couldn't see him no more. I stood there and cried like a baby. Why? It doesn't mean run over to this meeting, run over here and join this and join that. Take your letter from the Methodist, the Baptist Assemblies, the one this and so forth. That isn't it. It's set your faith to action. It's God's Word. And right away on every wind of the Holy Spirit that breathes down upon the mortal human being that's willing to set his faith in God and say, God's Word is right. Here's my wings. 
Hallelujah. Both of them, both through the Old Testament. I believe every word of it will pack me. It brought me from a sinner to a Christian. It brought me from a cursing sinner to a preacher. It took me from a blind man to a good eye. It healed me when I was sick. It'll carry me from earth to glory some of these days. But my faith rests alone in Christ the Lord. Oh, my. Faith in action. The heroes of the Old Testament had faith. They put it in action. You've got them for an example. Now, we've got faith, but you won't put it in action. Right away on the powers of the Holy Spirit. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, in the name of thy beloved Son, the Lord Jesus, may the Holy Ghost encamp about every believer in here tonight. And may the Spirit of the living God move into here and carry one of them away from the sick beds and sick and afflictions into the land of good health. May they walk out of here under the power of the Holy Ghost, knowing Jesus raised from the dead and is alive surely among us tonight. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. All right, we have some prayer cards out. I feel real religious right now. I feel good. Action. Let your faith go to work. What did God give it to you for? I believe they said to give 100 prayer cards last night. And we called maybe half of them or something. Let's begin. Let's begin about 50. Let's begin 51, say. Odd number. Who has prayer card 51? Raise up your hand right quick. In your, look at your prayer card. Just raise your hand. Don't, if I, I know who you are. All right, come here, lady. 52. Will you bring your prayer? All right, a colored lady, all right. 53. Would you bring your prayer? Oh, raise your hand. Uh, maybe I can't. 53. 54. 54. Would you raise your hand right away? All right, 55. 55. Would you raise your hand right away? All right, 56. Line up over here. 57. 58. 59. 60. Let's see if we can get them up there. 60. See where they're coming. 61. 2. 3. 4. 5. See if we can line, don't make any difference who you are, where you are, so we get lined up here and start praying. Oh, I love him. When I think of his omnipotent blessings, it raises my faith. Oh, Savior, raise my faith, and if they eat, can move a mountain. Lord, I believe all my doubts are buried in the fountain. Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God, is shared by scientific proof. Over and over again has the Lord proved it. Over and over again does the blind see the deaf here. Over every night the impossibles, scientifically impossible for a human being to do what the Holy Spirit does here every night right before your face. Amen. Absolutely impossible. But Jesus Christ, the resurrected Son of God, does it anyhow. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. Let's move our faith. How many tonight say, Brother Branham, oh, I know there's not half a building full here, Harley, but how many would say, Brother Branham, tonight I'm setting my sails. I'm placing everything that I've got, my faith in Jesus Christ, I'm setting right up. I'm believing him. God bless you. Oh, my. Let's stop this wishing and go to really action with God. Let's go in and mean business with him. How can you doubt any longer? How can you... When the Holy Spirit of the scientific world, over and over again, proving His presence, showing that He's here, showing by Im infallible signs in the scientific world, come right down to the meeting and do the very same things that Jesus of Nazareth did when He was here on earth, proven by the infallible signs that He's alive today and living among Him. Oh, it ought to bring your faith right up to a place to say, God be praised, I believe you, Lord. I have need for this or that. And tonight... I stand solemnly on your word and walk away from here a well person or a Christian or whatever you have need of. Amen. Oh, my, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. How my eyes was once blind. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. How I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, the devil trying to say, oh, this is, uh, this is something else. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. It's grace that's brought me safe this far. It's grace that'll take me on. Amen. Hallelujah. We've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun. 
We'll have no less days to sing His praise than when we first began. When that great redeemed host stands around the throne of God, waving the white palms of the palms in their hands and the white robes washed in the blood of the Lamb, we'll tell the story how He overcome. How did He overcome? By the blood of the Lamb and their testimony. Hallelujah. What is their testimony? Jesus lives. Oh, let it ring out through the mountains, to the hills. Send the message far and wide. Jesus lives. Not dead, but he's alive. I'm so happy to stand here in a, one of the major cities of the world, Chicago, Illinois, and claim that Jesus Christ raised from the dead and by his grace can prove it to you. Amen. Then let your sin cease. Take the idols from your hearts and believe on the living God and accept the blessings that he died for and appropriated for you. Put your faith into action. There sets a woman on the platform. God of heaven knows this is the first time I ever laid my eyes on her. Now, maybe I don't know how many hundreds of people are sitting here. Would make a difference? The whole world was sitting here. Doesn't matter. The woman's here for something I don't know. Well, Brother Renum, you mean to say that woman? Yes, sir, that's right. And what if she's sick? Can you heal her? No, sir. There's no one else can do it. If I can make her believe that Jesus did it when he died at Calvary and she's ready to accept it, it's over. Amen. Right. That'll be her faith. Jesus said, as thou hast believed, so be it to you. Amen. There's a woman I've never seen her. She never seen me. That's right, I guess, lady. We're strangers to each other, are we? We are. Kind of a godly-looking woman and motherly type of woman. And there she is. And here I am. A year younger than her, probably... Born many miles apart in the first time meeting in life. What you here for? You don't take my place? <laughs> Certainly. Let me tell you, I wouldn't do it either unless the Holy Spirit had said, I'll be with you. Amen. When the angel of God said, I'll be with you. Therefore, I'm not scared. Amen. Why, I'm trusting what he said. Why, why would you trust in an angel? As long as he spoke according to the word. Well, how is that according to the word? Jesus met a woman like that one day and never seen his life. He talked to her a few minutes and told her exactly where her trouble was. Is that right? Yeah. Jesus said, when he was risen, said, a little while, the things that I do, you shall do also. Even more than this, because I'm going to the Father. A little while, the world will see me no more, yet you shall see me. I will be with you. I'll be in you to the end of the world. Jesus made those statements, and he's true. I know his word is true. That's right. And his promise to me is true. And his promise to you is true. Amen. If talk about a miracle, said so the days of miracles is past, what would make that woman, me know what that woman, what any of you out there, what it would be? I couldn't do it. She might say, well, uh, she'd come up here. What if, if he didn't tell you? Well, then I wouldn't know. That's right. But if he does tell me, I will know. Amen. Amen. If that ain't a miracle, I never told it. If that, that's the same kind of thing that the Bible called a miracle. And it is a miracle. Amen. It's in the line of supernatural. If I told you I'd done it myself, I'd be a liar. Amen. But I'm telling you, Jesus Christ raised him the dead. He's here tonight. He's still the Lord Jesus. You believe. I'm going to ask you to be reverent. Be quiet. Not, not stir around. I don't care for you praising God. Of course, you can't. That's been one thing that's worried me. Why is it people in America, they can see the Lord working and sit dead still, never move and sit like there was a bump on a pickle? I, I can't understand that. Looks to me like it thrills my soul right. Oh, it looks to me like I could scream to the top of my voice. Jesus lives. Why am I mortal? I'm here in the world. What am I? Where did I come from? Where am I going? And Jesus come and said, I'll be your compass. I'll be your guide. Amen. He's raised from the dead. Don't worry. When old age grew, don't worry about that. When sickness strikes, don't worry. I'm here. Be not dismayed, neither be thou afraid. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Amen. All right, sister, would you come up this way just a moment, if you will? I want to challenge this audience. I spoke of Jesus Jesus is the one I love. Jesus is the one I believe. And Jesus is the one who promised these things. And if Jesus promised them, Jesus will do them, won't he? How many out there doesn't have any prayer cards now and wants to be healed by the Lord? Would you raise your hand? Now, look here, let me ask you something. I challenge your faith. 
I challenge you to put your faith to action. Amen. Look this way. Say, God, I believe the man's told the truth. And if you'll turn around and tell me, let him, like Jesus did, told the woman, I'm going to believe that you heal me. And if you'll let him turn around and tell me the same thing, I'll accept it. I'll believe it with all my heart. If he'd tell one out there that, it might to make every one of you believe it. Sure. If Jesus, hear this poor woman standing here, I don't know what she's here for. God knows that. But if Jesus Christ, if someone, if something would take place here and tell her what she's here for, well, that would be a miracle, wouldn't it? And now, as far as healing her, if she's sick, I don't know. But it ought to make every one of you believe. Make every one of you know that that same angel that's on this picture here, it's down there, it's promised in the Bible, it come through the Bible age, it's still living here tonight. The very same angels that they had... A, what a, angel is a messenger and anyone knows that the pillar of fire that led the children of Israel was the angel of the covenant is that right ministers well who was it Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever it's Jesus Christ that, that same light appeared to Peter and delivered him out of the prison that same light appeared to Paul smote him blind tucking down he said did he smite him blind yes sir the Bible said it did and that's the same thing it'll do to people today if you won't accept light the light will put your eyes out and you'll walk in darkness. You'll either receive it or reject it. Is that right? Amen. So believe with all your heart. I'm waiting for his presence. Of course I am. And, uh, and I know he's here at the platform. But I, I'm looking for his anointing. Now you believe with all your heart. And God be merciful. And go get the sick and bring them in. And now, sister, I want to talk to you just a moment. Just as we're standing here at different ages. That light's right in your face. I know like that. But... We, you and I, being strangers to each other, not knowing one another, there would have to be uh, some way that I would be told or know or something would have to take place if I know what you were here for. Is that right? Yes. Yes. No, I don't want you. No, I, I say, if I told you, if you told me, see, if, I, if you told me, then sure, I know if you told me. But if you don't tell me, then something has to tell me, doesn't it? Well, then, if the Lord Jesus... Is this one of your first times in the meeting? Yes. Oh, it's your first time. I see. All right. Well, then, in the meeting, back when Jesus was here on earth, he went around to the people, and he'd go through the places, and he didn't heal people. He said he didn't. He said, this, I can do nothing in myself, but what I see the Father doing, that I do. See? He said, it's not me that doeth the works, it's my Father. And in the Bible, when he'd stand in the Bible time and he would look out to his audience and say to the people, this one or certain, your faith has healed you from certain things. And one day he was talking to a woman at the well. And, um, and uh, he, uh, uh, you probably heard the story in the Bible. Yes, yes. And then um, you um, uh, read the story. Well, then you find out that he sent his disciples away because Father told him to go up there. The woman come and was talking. He got to talking to her. And when he got to talking to her, he said, bring me a drink. And she said, oh, it's not customary for you Jews to ask Samaritans such. He said, but if you knew who you were talking to, you'd ask me for a drink. And went ahead with the conversation. Finally, he found right where her trouble was. And she wasn't living right. So he said, go get your husband. She said, I don't have any husband. So that's right, you got five. Now watch what she said. She said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Now I know when Messiah cometh, that Messiah was Jesus. Said, I know when he comes, He'll tell us these things, but she didn't know who he was. He said, I am he, the Messiah. And she ran into the city telling people. Now, Jesus said, after I'm gone, although the world won't believe me anymore, so they won't see it. But said, you shall see me, for I'll resurrect from the dead, come back and live in you through every age to the end of the world. Now, if that Bible is true, Jesus is obligated to his word, isn't he? Now, if Jesus stands here tonight and me, you and I, a stranger, and tell me something about you that you know that I do not know. And you hear, probably heard other people say how they were getting well of different diseases and blind and afflicted. You know it's Jesus that's doing that because man can't do it. Now, if God will help me tonight, if I believe that he will, to help you. There's, uh, the anointing doesn't strike me just right. I don't know why. But if he will, then you will believe and accept that whatever you're here for, well, I don't know what it is. Might be finances, might be domestic, might be sickness. I don't know. But if he will tell me, then you believe the same Jesus that raised my dead is sure tonight talking. Is that right? Yes. All right. Will you believe it, audience? Yeah. Every one of you. Believe with all your heart. Now, I, it's, you see what a, a, a place it's in. Now, it's got to be God or, or the woman will have to walk off here without anything. See? 
Now, if she's sick and I could heal her and wouldn't do it, I'd be a brute. I can heal a woman, but by a divine gift, by Jesus Christ, if he was standing here himself with this suit on, he couldn't heal her. He'd tell her that he already did it when he died. Did Jesus die to heal us? To save us? Then that's complete. See, we just confess our sins. And then he is just to forgive because he's already done it. We accept what he done. Now, the little lady before me, may the Holy Spirit, he's here, and now may his blessings rest upon you each, every one of you. Be real reverend. I once want to talk to the lady. Man. All right, sister. Now, I trust that the Holy Ghost tonight, which is standing near, and right now, I want to ask you something. Just the last moment or so, there's been a strange feeling coming to you, hasn't there? A, a kind of an odd, like a sweet, calm feeling, like something that's fixing to take place. Because that's the Holy Spirit that's standing between us, you see. A light. And now, you're here, and I see what's wrong with you. You are suffering from a heart trouble. You have heart trouble. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then you have, a, you have someone you're concerned about, a loved one. It's a boy. And that boy is, uh, has a mental condition. That's right, isn't it? Now, I want to tell you where my stumble is to you. I see here not long ago, you in a Catholic church or something, you know, saying a prayer, but you've just recently been converted and become a Protestant just recently. Is that right? All right, now do you believe me as God's prophet? All right, go and receive your healing, man. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Have faith in God. Only believe. Let your faith rise up and believe with all your heart in Jesus Christ. Make you well. What's the difference in the walking of the lady at this time? Let's say praise the Lord, all of us. Sure. God wants to be worshipped. Now he's here. What did that? Right now, I couldn't have more tell you what was said to that woman than nothing. What did it? I never did it. Here's the one that did it right here. And that's the one that's right here now. God knows that. All right. All right, everyone be reverent now. Here's, here's another typical case. Uh, a lady, colored woman, standing here, me a white man. And that was an Ethiopian, not an Ethiopian, my big, a Samaritan woman that met Jesus that discussed about the racial affair. See, they had it in that day, but Jesus let her know that no difference. We're all the same. Jesus died for every one of us. Now we're strangers to one another. We are uh, two different races, see. And um, we, our forefathers were raised in different countries. It turned some of us white and some yellow and some brown, some black. And that we all come from Adam. That's all. And Jesus Christ died for every one of us to make us all one in him. You believe that, don't you? You do. Now, you being a colored woman, me a white man, and, and born maybe miles apart, never met each other till just now. Yes. That, yes. You have met me before. Pardon me, but I was prayed for two years ago for eating cancer. I was dying and he prayed for me in the Lord here. Did you hear that? Two years, what was that at, sister? Right here. Right here, two years ago, a cancer was eating her up. And I prayed for her here on the platform, and God healed her sound and well of it. Let us say praise the Lord. Is Jesus alive? Sure he is. Now, probably if she hadn't have told me that, I'd have known that in a few minutes when the vision comes. See? But if it was strike now, of course, I might say it over. I don't know. I'm in another world, and I just have to say what I'm looking at. See? I can't say it. I pray that God will give me something different from that so that it might help the faith. She don't need that. You wouldn't have seen it. She just wants to be prayed for. Or either she's got something on her heart. I don't know. May the Lord reveal it to me now. Right. I know you believe me then, sister. You're bound to believe. The Bible said one time, said Jesus was the devil. Some of the Pharisees and others said, can the devil open the eyes of the blind? No, sir. No, the devil can't heal at all. He has no virtue of healing at all. Only God. He, I'm the Lord who heals all your diseases, he said. That's right. Yeah. But you're suffering with something else, sister. That's right. I see you. You got, the, you got heart trouble for one thing. You're suffering with a heart fluttering like around your heart. That is true. And I see something or other. You, you got something like headaches or something. It's sinus, sinus trouble. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's the truth, isn't it? I see Jesus still lives, doesn't he? Now, the woman, I don't know how many I can get to in the prayer line, but just watch the Holy Spirit now. If I could talk to her now just a few minutes, maybe he'd say something else. He's told her something, ever what it was, it was true. 
it just breaks. I see you somewhere. I forget where it was at now, but I see you. Now you just believe because you have good faith. You're uh, no doubt with what you, you'll get what you ask for. But I, I really believe that what you've asked for, you already got it. So I, I just want to talk to you, Mendo, so the audience will know and other, other colored people in here that know you and so forth will know. Now, maybe he'll tell you something that's going to happen in a few days or something like that or something that happened way on her long ago. Just something that you know that I don't know nothing about. Just encourage the other people. I hope that he will. I can only ask. And this is a divine gift. Later this week, I'll explain the best I can how it comes. Something strange. I see the woman leading a little boy. It's a little boy about, uh, about eight years old. And the little boy is... Um, He's been to a doctor. He's bothered with the constipation, and it causes his little bowels to bleed, and the doctor can't check it. That's true. <laughs> I go to put that handkerchief you got in your hand on him. You'll get well. <laughs> oh, <Jesus. laughs> Hallelujah! Praise be to the living God, who knows all things, knows the secrets of your heart. The angel that appeared to me said, you'll know the very secrets, the things that's in their heart. Isn't that the very same thing Jesus did when he was here on earth? Then why wouldn't he do the same if he is the same? He's bound to do the same. God only knows. Now here stands a lovely little lady before me. I've never seen her in my life. She's a total stranger to me. I don't know her, but God knows her. That is true. And God can help her. And the only way he can do now, he sent his word. You believe that to be the truth, don't you? In his word, he said, he had said in the church, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists. You believe that, don't you? The apostle has his part to do. The prophet has his part to do. Gifts of healing, working of miracles. All of these things, it all goes in God. And you're very much in need of that tonight, aren't you? Because you're suffering with a lady's trouble, a female condition that's bothering you. It's got you scared and worried. You don't know what it's all about. Say by the way, you've been in the hospital, too. That's right. And you're a real nervous type person. And I see it's true. You've got stomach trouble. And every time when you eat, your stomach goes into a spasm. And that is right. Now go eat. Believe God with all your heart. Come here, sister, that I might ask him to bless you. Now, our Heavenly Father, be merciful to this young person standing here who's in need of your blessings. And I bless her with the anointing of the Holy Ghost upon me. I lay hands upon her in Jesus Christ's name and ask that she be made well. Amen. Blessed be the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, who raised up his son Christ Jesus and set him on high, who raised him from the dead. He lives tonight. As sure as God lives, Christ lives. And his spirit is here. It's infallible. Put your faith to work tonight. Believe him with all your heart. Now, that makes me real weak. Just as soon as I go to dropping, I can feel myself moving away. It's getting dizzy, like, because I'm getting weaker all the time. Speaking. Thank you. If you just pass the people and pray for them. Now, here's a vision coming right now. I see that light hanging right over this person standing here. It's a woman sitting out here at the end. She's studying about someone. It's about a sister. And a sister has cancer. If that's right, lady, stand up on your feet. Does that raise your hand up like that? That's right. All right. You're worried about your sister with cancer, aren't you? Go give her the good news. Jesus is raising from the dead. Thank you, honey. Amen. Believe with all your heart. Amen. Have faith in God. Believe Him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Have faith in God. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. What did that? Brother Branham had nothing at all to do with it. What did it? The woman's faith in the resurrected Lord Jesus. That's right. The spirit, the supernatural one that's here now, who knows you. Just let your faith fly away with him tonight. Just get into his arms and move away. Just leave this old quacking world behind. Cross the separation between faith and unbelief and move off in faith so many million miles beyond this chatter of the world here saying the days of miracles is past and Jesus died and that settled it. He rose again. Amen. Oh, 2,000 years has passed and he's here yet tonight in Chicago. And when eons of time, 
When vaulting time shall be no more, when every star ceases to shine, when the moon melts and flies into space and the world is no more, Jesus Christ will still be alive. Amen. And because I live, you can live also. And we'll be with him when there's no more world and no more moon and no more star. The lovely one that's with us tonight, we'll be with him forevermore in his presence in the Father's house. Hallelujah. Sure, you say I'm excited. I'm not excited. I'm happy. I got something to be happy about. My faith is coming closer in God. I find out God's done so many things for me, vindicated the work around the world, around the world, through every critic. I begin to believe that what I ask, He'll do it. Amen. I, I, I've got faith in Him, and I want you to have faith in Him. I want you to believe it. Amen. God be praised and blessed forever. Hallelujah. You believe, sister? Yes, sir. Is this the patient? Yes, brother. Brad. You, you believe? All right. If you believe, only God can make you well. I can't make you well. If you're sick, I don't know. But now look, if I stood here and talked to you a few minutes, God would let me know what the trouble is. But if I, I believe, if I just lay hands on you, you'd believe you got healed anyhow. See? You'd do it, wouldn't you? Sure you would. But God is for the sakes of the audience. So, you see, I can't on these kind of meetings. I couldn't stop it now and start doing that because it wouldn't, wouldn't work. See? But the audience might know. Let's talk a moment. Now, we, we probably, this is, is this our first meeting time in life? Yes. First time you've ever met me? Yes. Yeah. You were sure yesterday at the meeting. But that, well, I've never met you personally to know anything about you. That's right. I heard about you. Just heard about you. All right, I just want to, you look to me a few minutes and take every thought away from your mind and just say, God, I know that this great feeling that I have now doesn't come from that poor little man standing there. It's bound to come from you because it's working on my soul. And you know that's true. <laughs> it's, it is. But it has to come from Him. And He alone. And now, if you believe with all your heart, and God will reveal something that, that you know that I don't know nothing about. And if He'll reveal it to you right now on the platform, you'll accept what you come for. Is that right? Will the audience do the same thing? Yeah. May do it now. This artist said it. If God will do it. I don't say He will. He might not. He's never failed me yet. But I believe He will. And if he doesn't, I'll say, Sister, I don't know. Because I'm just a man. I have no way of knowing. But if he will tell me and anoint me, then I'll know. Now, may he grant it is my prayer. Now, you're, you're conscious that something's beginning to move on you. That's this very light you see here in the picture. That's right. That's what it is. Now, you are, you are suffering with something that's on your hand. And um, you've got a crippled hand. And that hand was caused by you cut it some time ago on something like a glass or something. And, um, and it something taking place. I see uh, the woman, uh, uh, she's holding it, was wrapped up with something, and it's great streaks. It cut blood poison in it. Yes. And the blood poison got real bad, and it began to move it down. Yes. And it's strange. And you've been to doctors, and they can't do nothing about it. And you're a, a woman, you work. And you work in some sort of an office, kind of a, you're typing, and you're doing typewriter work in that hand, and someone told you a long time ago about my meeting, and they told you about me. You come over to the meeting tonight, immediately after work, without having your supper. You got a prayer card, and you went out and eat your supper, and then come back, so that you could come and it's called in the line. Thus saith the Lord. That is true. You believe now? Go receive your healing. God the Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Give Him praise. Jesus raised from the dead and is living in this auditorium in Chicago tonight. He'll do anything that you'll ask Him to do if you'll believe it. But he can't do it until you believe it. Do you believe? Yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I love him with all my heart. Isn't he wonderful? Oh, how, how I love him. Doesn't something just make you feel real kind of good down in the inside of your heart when you know you don't have to guess anymore? All the guessing's gone. The Bible's true. Jesus raised from the dead. He's here now. 
That's him right now. That, that's not me. Why, I can't do that. I don't know those things and don't heal people. It's Jesus, the Son of God. Have faith in him. What do you think, Mother, sitting there looking at me? You're suffering with a head trouble, aren't you? You believe Jesus would make you well? Little elderly lady sitting right here. Yeah, that's right. You were sitting there praying, wasn't you, Mother? You got having trouble with your head. That's right. Now you believe he's going to make you well? You do? Will you do me a favor? Now, being that Jesus has been so good to you, lay your hand over on that man there. He's suffering with heart trouble. He, he's been, well, he's had heart trouble a long time. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, amen. Now, sir, you're sitting there saying, well, Lord, why don't you pa don't pass me while you're talking to her? Is that right? Raise your hand. That's right. Now, he is going to pass you. He's going to heal you if you just believe it. Will you believe it? Amen. Oh, May the Lord Jesus make you well. Hallelujah. Have faith in God. There he is, just moving through the audience. Oh, my. I wish I could. Oh, how he loves to be worshipped. He loves you. Praise be his name. You ought to believe right now, every one of you. Have faith and believe. Here's a man standing before me. How do you do, sir? Are we strange to each other, sir? We don't know each other. Yes, sir, my or you have been in the meetings coming to me. I don't know you ought to know. No. But um, there's somebody here who, who does know you. Isn't that right? And he knows all about you. And he can heal you, can he? And make you well. Yes. Sure, he can. He's lovely. And that's what makes him so good is because he's God. And he loves everybody. Now, if Jesus will tell me what you're here for, will you believe me to be his prophet? And then if he'll tell me, then I'll come. That's anointing of something on me, isn't it? Then if I lay hands on you according to the Bible, then you believe you'd get well? Now you're suffering with your feet, aren't you, sir? And it's your legs also. Isn't that right? Now, if I lay hands on you, think they'd get well? Here's another thing. You've been all bothered about somebody. And that's a nephew, a man. And he's not here. He's in a big city, great big city that sits near a border. Is Detroit, Michigan. And right at this very night, he's in the hospital. He's under an oxygen tent. And he's got heart trouble. Take send that handkerchief you got in your hand to him for his healing. And you go in God's peace rest of the day. Believe now with all your heart, may the Lord Jesus Christ away. Hallelujah. You believe you were healed sitting in the I believe it with all my heart. Oh, isn't he wonderful? Be reverent. Now, don't get up and leave. Is it time? Or right, we'll close then. See? All right. May the Lord bless you, each one. When you disturb, see, I can't, uh, it won't, God is reverent. He can't, he just can't move when people are irreverent. We can't do it. I've held you too long, perhaps. Have faith now. See, I told you, sit still. You see, if you, if you move around, it throws it off to me. You see, it's souls. I can't explain it. Your spirit. And when you move, that interrupts the, the, the Holy Spirit. You say, what about that in the Bible? Why, sure. Jesus put the people out of the house to raise a dead girl. He, he took a man, led him outside the city, away from the people, to get him alone. What do you think about that little lady standing there on the end? You were right there praying, God, don't let this be my night. Is that right? If that's what you were asking, God, stand up on your feet. Now, you know what? That stomach trouble you have is healed. Now, you can go eat what you want to. God bless you. Amen. What do you think about that dad sitting right behind her, sitting, moved right back to you, sitting there, you got rheumatism. You believe Jesus is going to make you well? All right, stand up on your feet, stomp your feet up and down and go home. Say, thanks be to God. He healed you. Hallelujah. Lady, sitting there with your hands folded, saying, Lord, let this be my night. If you believe, you won't have heart trouble anymore. Do you believe? Hallelujah. Then go and receive. Praise be to God. Have faith in God. Heart trouble is enough for God to heal, isn't it, sister? He can just make it well. He can do anything he wants to, can he? You believe he'll do it? Little lady, sitting right back here on the end of that row, first row over here, sitting with gallbladder trouble, sitting there praying. You believe God's going to make you well on a little short row there on the end. You believe Jesus Christ's going to make you well? If you can believe it. You can have what you ask for. God bless you, sister. You receive your healing. Amen. Let's say praise the Lord. Do you believe it with one accord? Put your hands on one another and just pray the prayer of faith right now. And everybody be healed at once. Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, thy 
Son, let this be the hour that when the people will set their faith in God and the great Holy Ghost will heal every one that's in here. Grant it, Lord. May their faith reach out now. Take a hold of God and be healed, everyone. Let the Holy Ghost fall right here in this building and make them everyone well. I rebuke the devil. I condemn him in Jesus Christ's name. I cast him out of every person in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.